But then I'm actually starting to get annoyed now. Because like at first it was funny, like, oh, I'm being clumsy, but now I'm getting really pissed off. Like, <laughs> why am I doing this? Different when it's yourself and you've got to get used to that. Yeah. Mentally, like, it is a big change. Yeah. And, like, what, what am I supposed to do? <laughs> because, you know, you've gone in on Emma, and then I think you might have gone in on someone else, and yeah. now... You're going in on obligatory, which everybody does. Everybody does that. I know. I'm not going to offend so many people. Never change your bed from now on. <laughs> Emily just throws fucking shade straight at Emma. But every time I buy shirts that I feel like are a little bit out there or I'm trying to be a little bit more fashionable, um, express myself a little bit more, Emily doesn't allow it and she makes me send them back to where you saw. No, I mean, it's fine for you, but I've got to walk next to you. <laughs> it's yeah. like, you do you, but then when I'm with you, it's like, mm -hmm, I'm was... with Quirky. <laughs> with Quirky. <laughs> there was the white jeans episode. Yeah, um, I mean, I'm sorry, but white skinny jeans. <laughs> I was going on holiday and I thought white jeans would be nice. They had to be sent back. No, because I don't think it was for a holiday. I think it was you just wanted them in general. Yeah. Because I'm quite open. Then when you come back with the just white skinny jeans out of <laughs> nowhere, it's a bit like, okay, it's going to take some getting used to. I did wear the white jeans once with the label on, and then I just sent them back anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but also, I had white skinny jeans, so it's like, can you imagine us both walking around in white skinny yeah. jeans? Power couple. Now we've both got loud shirts as well. Well... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I didn't wear my loud shirt today. Do you like my loud shirt? There's going to be some people on audio only, so you're going to have to describe it. I've got a... Wow, green. how do you even explain <laughs> it? It's like a silky green blouse. shirt. Blouse? Do people still say blouse? I don't know. I think it went out with the Second World War. That's so true. Why is it not... It is a blouse, isn't it? I don't no, know. I don't know. Anyway, people. Primark special because... Yeah. I don't know what to wear these days since giving birth, so um, I thought <laughs> <laughs> I can't dress how I usually would dress, so I thought I would push the boat out and try something different, so this is what I've gone with. It's true. Emily's been having a bit of a wardrobe crisis, haven't you? Everything crisis. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for tuning in to listen to um, Emily's depressing monologue here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but because I've worked for this podcast like, it just feels like I've dressed really smart yeah like a day at the office but I want this to be very unprofessional unprofessional? yeah why? not like unprofessional just I want to not feel like this is our business because it's not <laughs> this is just something we're doing <laughs> randomly and I, because we used to be in kind of professional for our business Thrive Ignite I just thought this can just be like, we can do whatever we want. We can yeah. swear. We can, you know, yeah. tell the truth. Smoke cigs. Smoke cigs if you want. <laughs> um, Sniff a bit of, you know, cocaine on the table. <laughs> <laughs> but now I look the most professional I've ever looked in my life. Yeah, very true, yeah. Well, <laughs> with Thrive Ignite, we try to be professionally unprofessional, don't we? Exactly. Which means uh, we turn up on time. The workouts come out on time. Every problem is resolved quickly. <laughs> this is like an advert for Thriving Night. Um, but when that camera's rolling, you have to act like a bit of a dickhead because nobody wants a Peloton man, do they? No. Well, we're not into that and we're not going to do that because it's just not us. We're very just like kind of fun, laid back yeah. and we just kind of be ourselves on the classes, Yeah. which we are unprofessional people. <laughs> so, <laughs> so you want this to be even more unprofessional i know that sounds weird doesn't it mm. but i think it's because obviously on the classes we try and not swear and everything because we've got a lot of mums we like to keep it pg so if kids are always with them when they're doing the exercises because they're yeah. doing it from home then you know it's fine we can they, people can put us on yeah it's I, i've been thinking a bit recently because Sometimes when you're really getting into a workout and a song is like got a lot of swearing in or whatever, yeah, it really does hype you up that little bit more. Yeah, and so I end up getting, you know, I'm putting these songs in the workouts, and then I'm like, oh, this one's got swearing in, but I'm like, oh, fuck it, I'll just put it in anyway. Yeah, and I give like the lamest swear <laughs> warning when it's coming. <laughs> Sometimes I completely forget. I know in the past we tried to talk over a bit if there was like swearing in it or whatever, yeah. and obviously. I feel like a lot of people in the group have really young kids. They probably don't even notice. Well, personally, I mean, I wouldn't be asked. Do you know what I mean? No. I understand if people are, but 
you know. I don't I mean, even know how, how that became a thing, but like I think at first when we started doing it, I think we thought we had to be professional. So like we were like, oh, we shouldn't swear, and it just became a thing. And then a lot of mums started joining the group, and we were like, okay, probably best that we yeah we don't swear. Mums don't like swearing, but no, it, I mean it does sound ridiculous sometimes when I'm watching football and then you know you hear the crowd and they're chanting something and then you hear the commentator apologize for any swearing it just seems in this day and age it seems ridiculous yeah i mean do you think we swear much in in general yeah absolutely <laughs> definitely do you know i don't know i didn't i didn't know the answer really but i think every other word that usually you know i mean on this podcast i don't want to be <laughs> i was gonna say effing and jeffy effing and jeffy. I, I, I never say that <laughs> I've never heard you say that. <laughs> On this podcast, I don't want to be effing and jeffing, but I think generally, yeah, every other word is a swear word. And obviously with Tommy, I don't know how I feel about that. You know, I mean, he's so young at the minute, it doesn't matter. But in general, like what? Are we just going to keep effing and jeffing even <laughs> as he's growing up? Okay, for me personally, I think I don't mind swearing around him. You're going to eff and jeff? I'm going to eff and jeff. Oh my because God. Because I think, right, it's going to start swearing anyway. Like, everybody swears. It's going to start swearing. Is swearing really a, such a bad thing anyway these days? Um, you know, if you say, oh, shit. Is that offensive, really, or is that that bad? Like, I think, I feel like it used to be, but now I don't even, like, think about it that much as a swear word. However, if he said it, say his man is four and he says, oh, shit, it would just be hilarious. Yeah, it, it would, would just be. be funny. People might think, like, oh, bad parenting, they've been swearing around him, but it's like, so what? Funny, like, there's a four year old saying, oh, shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, do you want my hot take? Go on. I agree with you. I would say that if he's brought up right, though, you know, I still think manners are really important and, you know, having respect and stuff like that. Yeah. And I think he'll have all that. And so he might balance that with a bit of edge and occasional, oh, shit. You yeah, know. it might just make him cool. Exactly. But no, I, I actually don't know how I feel, really. Like, yeah. I'm saying I don't mind, but really, I bet I won't end up swearing around him. You won't F and Jeff. Like, right now we are, but I feel like as he's starting to learn words and stuff, I feel like naturally I'll just be a bit like, mm, maybe I shouldn't say that. Yeah, yeah. Um, I should point out that Tommy is around at the minute. He's nearby. <laughs> so, he's just there swinging in his chair. And he's been asleep and I can hear him just making a few little noises. And I'm thinking if we have to kind of go off briefly and come back on. He might want his milk. Why. He's The guy's addicted to milk. He's eight weeks at the time of filming. It's he's actually nine months. weeks. Nine weeks? <laughs> yeah, it's nine weeks <laughs> yesterday. To be fair, that first week of his life, you were pretty out of it. Yeah. So definitely. you probably don't remember that one. Maybe for the first two weeks, I, I, it's just a blur. Like, I just don't remember it really at yeah. all. Well, you know that he's, like, under one year, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> no, for the first few weeks, I was keeping track, and now it's getting to nine weeks, I'm like, I've lost track now. You're swearing at him. You don't know how <laughs> fucking old he is. <laughs> Worst parent ever. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, the lad is addicted to milk, isn't he? I mean, it's the only thing he can have, so, I mean, wouldn't you be? Yeah. <laughs> That's a good point. I keep messing with my hair, though. Is that going to... Like the mic. I keep uh, trying to like move it out of the way, but really it might be like making it all like Yeah, yeah, try not to if you can <laughs> It might be fine. It's but... because before I came on my shirt got wet there. Mm -hmm. So I was trying to put my hair there and now it's over the mic and now I just keep fidgeting. Oh like, you're nervous. I'm so professional. You're nervous. It's the first podcast. We haven't done a podcast before. Uh what is the subject? The subject is well. We didn't know because it's going to be a bit about everything. So we asked questions on my Instagram, which is emily.thriveignite, and people brought in questions. So I figured it might be better to just do what the people want. Well, that's it. Because at first, to... the people listening to it are just going to be the people who follow me on Instagram. Yeah. I mean, hopefully, either that or it'll be absolutely fucking nobody listening. You... Hopefully. Hopefully, we get <laughs> some people. Um, but guys, just... This is going to be completely natural, just Emily and Mark. We don't know what we're talking about. We're just talking like we would be, really. So we'll just see what happens. Yeah, this is what we do every evening, isn't it? We get together <laughs> with a cup of tea. Uh, usually we don't put the camera on and we just chat, don't we? We're very good at communication in our relationship. Yeah, definitely. I really want to have a sip of that. I know, there's no Mark said, so we made a cup of teas and then Mark said when it, we started filming or just before... You can't drink it because it'll slurp on the mic. Go on, have a go and let me show the but audience. I don't slurp like you. Like, you shouldn't drink. Well, I, you if you're fucking drinking, I'm drinking. 
Oh, as if you drink like that. <laughs> I do. The most silent sip that I've ever seen in no, my entire life. No, I'm not an annoying person. True. Like, I don't do annoying things. Yeah, true. You are a very annoying person and do a lot of annoying things. Also true. So, and you do slurp a lot. This... I've had to tell him a few times if people come around, like, don't slurp. <laughs> sometimes it's like we sat there and all can hear his mouth going like... And I'm like, why are you doing that? And he says it makes it more mm. enjoyable. Slurping away, it does make it more enjoyable. Why? It's the same taste. No, but, you know, you've got to express yourself. This is your problem, Emily. You don't express yourself. I don't express myself and you express yourself too much. <laughs> Maybe that's why we work. It's a good balance. But I do agree that you are not an annoying person and that I am an annoying person. It's something that I sometimes try and rein in, but then sometimes I think it's really funny. Yeah. You've um, got to get the balance. You do have to get the balance. Um, but what was I going to say uh, with regards to slurping? And what did you say? That I'm an annoying person. Oh, I was going to point out that actually this is a perfect segue into the fact that Emily has become clumsy. Any new mothers <laughs> out there who were not clumsy people at all, Emily was the least clumsy person. I've never done anything clumsy in my life. No, she can't fucking pick someone up without dropping it. Can you? But it's that bad. Like mm. at least five times a day I do something clumsy. And but we were laughing about it, but then I'm actually starting to get annoyed now because like at first it was funny, like oh, I'm being clumsy, but now I'm getting really pissed off. Like, <laughs> why am I doing this? Yeah, because I feel like as um, pregnancy or birth or something, it's just like changed something in my brain, which yeah. I'm not happy about. I did hear that you lose brain cells when you're pregnant because you gain brain cells back, but maternal brain cells or something i could see the remaining brain cells working when you're yeah, trying to get that that could be out. bs but <laughs> i feel like um it's i'd lost brain cells Definitely. i can't even think what i'm trying to say <laughs> <laughs> yeah and mark is very clumsy so now this is a disaster because we oh are both God. so clumsy that like how are we supposed to look after this child i don't know we're effing and jeffing we have no idea how old he is and now <laughs> neither of us are safe to pick him up no we need to get a baby full-time baby a full-time nanny and i think yeah <laughs> <laughs> so shall we do some questions let's do it let's load up the questions um guys smash like and subscribe share the podcast if you're watching it and you enjoy it here are your questions um we haven't rehearsed any answers or even thought about these no. so let's see how this Hopefully goes there's some fun ones yeah <laughs> let's see um where did the name thriving night come from asks emma good question so i should have started with a fun one that's not really a fun question what? sorry emma i mean it's i like the question <laughs> going in on emma <laughs> Going in there. No, but I mean, because I was thinking, let's start with a fun one, but then I pick not a fun one. Let me set the scene. Emma's there at home. Oh, I, I will ask a question. Hopefully they read my question out. Hopefully they enjoy my question. Emily just throws fucking shade straight at Emma. I am sorry, Emma. You said you weren't going to call anybody out doing this podcast. <laughs> And let's do the que brilliant question from Emma coming in. She says, where did the name Thrive Ignite come from? I feel like it seems insincere now that you've... Um... No, it's very sincere. So the name Thrive Ignite, for anyone who doesn't know, Thrive Ignite is our business. It's at-home fitness classes mm -hmm. with me and Mark. Used to be me. Then I got pregnant. But we'll, we'll get to that. Yeah. Um... <laughs> Emily obviously couldn't help herself, got herself pregnant. And now she's been off work for a while, haven't you? I got myself pregnant. She got herself pregnant, the silly girl. <laughs> silly girl. Um, but yeah. No, they've... Mark got me pregnant, so now you're the one picking up pieces. Yeah, I, uh, true. It was my fault. It was your fault. It <laughs> anyway, let's not go actually. into too much detail on that. Um, <laughs> where did the name Thrive Ignite come from? It came from the fact that we started a business called Thrive 9 to 5. Which is a great name, right? It uh -huh. makes sense. Thriving nine to five it was a health and fitness i think we did diet at the time as well so we yeah. thought we'll help people thrive nine to five we was going to focus on office workers most office workers work nine to five you know easy name right easy it sounds like the uh, <laughs> dolly parton song working nine till five what a way to make and so on thriving nine till five exactly if we ever had adverts on tv that would have been it but anyway nobody could grasp the name could they no it was like Thrive to five, nine till thrive. You know, people will be asking, so how's nine till thrive? And I'm like, I don't know, because I don't know what that is. I feel this is friends and family as well, by the way. Like, no one could grasp it. 
So we started to question everything like, what? I thought that was a great name. What? What's so hard about it? Must have been too many words. Um, so then we started a January boot camp, which was slightly different, just fitness, no nutrition. We had no plans for it at first. It was lockdown, I think. And we started doing live classes on my Instagram. People loved it. We did it in the style of bingo. And then in January, we thought, let's just do a boot camp of live classes. And we thought, call it Thrive Ignite, you know, like let's ignite for January. People loved it and we carried it on since then. So we kind of, I felt like we just had to stick with that name because that's what we've decided with in January. Yeah. And also me and Mark are just like, people don't really care, like to be yeah. honest. So it was like, whatever, let's Thrive Ignite. Let's just roll with that. Well, that's it. I mean, there's a business called Asda. Do you know what, like, I mean? what does that mean? If you didn't know it was, we know what it is now, Asda, but imagine you don't know what it is and it's just a word, Asda. Fucking idiots, Asda. <laughs> God. But anyway, I thought that because it's like thrive and ignite. We want people to like reignite the spark for fitness because obviously we want to change people's association with exercise, make it fun. Powerful. And so we want to like reignite the love for exercise. Yeah. And we want them to thrive afterwards. So it, it does make sense. Yeah. So I'm that's like Asda. And like stupid Asda and Aldi. And that's, I guess that's it. That covers that one, right? Yeah, anyway. So thank you for your question, Emma. Um, Stupid shit question. <laughs> <laughs> Any joking? I'm just saying what Emily's, um, what Emily thinks. <laughs> Emma knows I love her. Anyway, um, I do hope to return to Thrive Ignite soon. Yes. It's been nine weeks, we said, not eight weeks since I gave birth. Oh, yeah, nine weeks. Um, I presumed before I give birth, before I knew I was going to have a C-section, all of that jazz, I thought most people say, oh, six weeks and you can get back to exercise and do all of that. So that's what I thought. It's now nine weeks and it's only been, I think I said to you before, the past two days I've only just started to feel like myself. Yeah. Like actually been able to go out for a walk, <laughs> come back, cook, clean, look after Tommy without feeling like I want to die. Yeah. No, but it's... It sounds extreme, but it's been that bad. It's true. We thought that you would have, you would be able to work until maybe two months before your pregnancy, before your birth rather. Yeah. And then we thought you'd be coming back quickly afterwards and neither of these things were true. You had a pretty nope. bad pregnancy as well. Yeah. A, a month or two into pregnancy, I started to get very, very sick, like too sick to even leave the bedroom. Never mind, like do a class. I did for, try for a while, didn't I? Yeah. We had to keep stopping the classes like after every five minutes because I was just... In and a bad way. We just edited them together. So it was, we'd do five minutes, edit that into the next five minutes, edit that. Into, and it's so bad because like, you know, I mean, in the nicest possible way, your vibe was pretty awful in those classes, wasn't well, it? Well, yeah, that, it got to a point where I thought, I've got to stop. And I did put on the Thriving Next Story, I said, I feel like I'm ruining the vibe for you all because we're all about the vibe. <laughs> we want to make it very energetic, very yeah, fun. It has to be. And I did not have that in me. And I thought, I'm just ruining this. But it was awkward because obviously the business was under my name. People come through me. It's all through my Instagram. Like I was the business. And yeah. all of a sudden it's like, see ya. Like I'm very ill. Where the fuck's she gone? And at first we had to hide my pregnancy as well, didn't we? So it's not, at first we were saying I was ill and people kept worrying about me <laughs> in the WhatsApp saying like, I hope Emily's okay, send him love. Yeah. And like, oh, I felt so bad. I was like, I just want to tell him. But like. I think everybody probably guessed. Or a lot of people must have guessed. A few people did guess. Mystery illness, like. <laughs> and really, I was happy to tell people, I think, but you, it's a thing out there, isn't it? You only tell people you're pregnant after 12 yeah. weeks. And I had that in my head where I was like, next time I think you probably just tell people. Yeah. Really, because I think, if the worst case scenario happened, it's like you want to personally. I want support. Yeah, like, yeah, I, I think. I so. don't want to deal with that myself. Mm -hmm. um, so, but anyway, yeah. Well, each to their own on that, of course. But I would say the same. Yeah. You're gonna want people to know if you know the worst happens, aren't you? So. Yeah, like those first few months is when most women get ill, and you're trying to hide a pregnancy. Yeah. That's so hard. I felt it like. It is. I had horrible. to keep apologising to my friends and saying, oh, sorry, I'm ill. But after like four weeks, people are thinking, what, is something seriously wrong? Because how are you still ill? Yeah. And so next time, I don't want to deal with all of that. I just want to be like, look, I'm pregnant. I'm ill. Hopefully, I won't be ill next time. Because, <laughs> yeah, it was. So, yeah, for two months in, got ill, couldn't do any classes for the rest of the pregnancy. Gave birth, thinking that I'm going to be excited to get back to it. It's been nine weeks. Still not back to it. But I am thinking of. Doing one of our steps classes soon, aren't I? Yes. Um, would you say it's laziness? <laughs> I wish it was just laziness. Uh -huh. The problem I'm facing now, though, is I don't know what to wear for the class because yeah. none of my clothes fit me uh, pre-pregnancy. 
Uh, I've got this new body shape now that I've taken on. Like, I don't know how to deal with it all. Yeah. Don't feel like myself. I feel utterly disgusting, to be honest. <laughs> um, like, because I thought I would bounce back after pregnancy, but for a very good reason. Naturally, I'm a very slim person. I eat a very good diet. I know what to do to just like, you know, because I thought it was just a case of you lose weight. You put weight on, you'll lose the weight. Mm-hmm. But it's not. I didn't realize that I've had a C-section for one. So I've got a scar. I had to wait for that to recover. It's still quite tender. Um, and then I had ab-, ab separation, like severe ab separation, like the ages apart from each other. <laughs> and it makes your belly protrude out. So like my belly just kind of still comes out, which is just how do I get clothes that fit me for that? Yeah. Um, so there is no bouncing back because I don't know what to do about the situation. Apparently, if you bring your abs back together, it helps your stomach to like you know stop protruding out, which yeah. I'm hoping is the case. As for the scar, that's like tightened my skin o- underneath, so I've got like skin coming over the top, which I feel like surely I'm not going to be able to do anything about that. Yeah. Surely that's surgery. So all of this, it's like I've got to mentally get used to that, and I understand like. I've given birth, that's a beautiful thing, and everyone will be still saying, like, you know, you feel beautiful, but it's different when it's yourself, and you've got to get used to that. Yeah. Mentally, yeah. like, it is a big change, yeah. and I've got to find some sort of confidence to come back on the classes. You want to be inspirational, you know, I'm used to kind of being on my Instagram, looking strong, energetic. Like, what do I post now? Yeah. Like, I don't have, like, a body that I can show and be, like, inspiring people. Mm-hmm. Like, what what am I supposed to do? <laughs> I don't know. It's it's a bit of a uh, mental journey that you're going on. I mean, I know what most I know what I'm thinking and what most people will be thinking. Which is <laughs> uh, well, that you're still gorgeous and you should own it. And yeah, you have done a beautiful thing. I un- I completely understand where you're coming from, and I don't want to make light of it. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's only you who can kind of take the steps in that direction to feeling more confident again. Mm. Probably physically, you know, you, you may start to like, I don't know, look a little bit better or get back to where you were. But, you know, probably it's not possible to get entirely back to where you yeah. were. And it's going to be a bit of a... Well, I had a 10 pound baby and so my skin <laughs> has stretched, which means even if I, my stomach goes back down, I'm going to have loose skin surely because where's that skin going to go? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. So, I mean, that's a journey in itself. And yep. I feel like... Yeah, I'm used to posting on my Instagram, trying to inspire people. So now I've got to find like a new kind of, I don't know, motivation for doing it. And Well, that's it. I think because there's plenty that you can do to inspire people and to motivate people, but it has to be authentic. So until you're feeling that way, it's just not real anyway, is it? No. So it's up to you really to just keep moving. I mean, already, like, you know, I've seen the progress that you've made in nine weeks. You're already a world universe further along than you were after you gave birth and you were just a zombie. (laughs) Definitely, Um, because energy is a big thing for me and getting that back is one of the main... I feel like energy was how I described my personality, really. It's just I'm an energetic, happy, positive person. Yeah. So taking that all away, which it was taken away from me, I feel like I'm left with like, okay, who am I left with now? Like, I don't really know who I am. Who am I? Who am I literally? So I'm kind of trying to find myself again, even though that it's quite cheesy, but I've literally got to find myself again. I've got to figure out who I am. Yeah. In what way do I want to inspire people now? Because it's got to be different from what it was before. I was more like... It's so funny, like all of this though, because we were so naive as to what pregnancy and (laughs) and having a child was going to do to our life and business. I just thought, okay, yeah, you know, we'll get pregnant. Emily will probably be good for six months and then she'll give birth to the child and then um you know maybe a few weeks in she can get back to work and then we can crack on as usual and when in fact it has been far harder than we anticipated like 10 times harder than we ever could have anticipated i mean look like there's a lot of people who follow me that are mums a lot of our members are mums so they can probably relate to me and perhaps I can inspire them in that way because I'm not going to give up I am going to work on it yeah I am going to find some kind of kind of self-acceptance I'm going to figure out how do I work out when when I've got the ab separation when I've had a c-section so I guess in that sense I can help women like that yeah and you can help the women who are just still just you know young and, <laughs> young and free <laughs> young and, and happy. Free. I mean 
I think we've done well to keep the ship steady and growing as we have, yeah. to be honest, because it has been very, very difficult. Um, but, you know, it's like anything. What can you do? Ain't nothing to it but to do it. Yeah, you know we'll have I mean? to go in, like, on different podcasts, on, on different things. I'd love to talk about pregnancy. I'd love to tell you my birth story. We should. I'd love to talk about kind of our life and how kind of hard and traumatic it's been throughout the whole process. Yeah. But, like... Let's change question because Emma only asked, where did the name Thriving Night come from? I know, from? fucking hell. She didn't want a bloody deep dive into your mental state. She just wanted to know where the fucking name come from and you took the piss out of her for that. Oh, my God. Was that the same question? Yeah. Oh, God. God help the next fucking person. I know. Um, John says, does Mark like bands? <laughs> does Mark like bands? Uh, John only asks this because... He always wears Vans t-shirts. He's a friend of mine. And every time he's out, he pretends that he's a fan of Vans the vehicle. <laughs> and so every time he tries to corner you and talk about, oh, there's this new 4,000 litre van that I've been looking at. And he just chats shit, basically. And he thinks it's funny and it's not. That's um, Palo in a nutshell. So do I like Vans? I mean, he's just, now he's, bringing his bullshit onto my podcast yeah go away john right let's get a different one becky says we just insult everybody who sends a question in <laughs> do you have any pet peeves pet peeves this yes, is a absolutely. good question let me lock my phone um do you have any pet peeves Matt? i have got so many pet peeves i'm just trying to think which ones come to mind to bring up first um okay i think one that we share yeah living in the centre of Manchester, is loud cars. The worst. Tell me about loud cars, Emily. Oh, my God. Like, there's just no need. Like, I think people actually do something with the car to make it loud. It's yeah. Honestly, for one, you wouldn't buy a car like that. But they buy a car and then make it loud. Then, especially when it's sunny in Manchester, they just rev it. They, they just love it, don't they? And that makes it worse because you know they're enjoying it, but they're like, everyone else around them is hating it. Absolutely. Does anybody does it impress people? I think that's what lads think, isn't it? Like, I'll rev my engine. Maybe these girls will fancy me now or whatever, but it's like, maybe they could have fancied you, but now, it's, it's <laughs> no. <laughs> I honestly have no fucking idea. I mean, it is the worst thing imaginable. It is so fucking annoying when one of those loud cars goes past and it cracks. I just think, what a twat. You have to be the worst person. Yeah. To think that's a good idea. Like, especially at night or on a weeknight, honestly, yeah. maybe I'm just getting old. But you're literally driving around in fury in everybody. I imagine as that car's going along, there's like a red blanket behind it yeah. encompassing everybody around. <laughs> and it's just literally you're just spreading negativity. That's it. Oh, let's leave good vibes wherever go. Bring positivity yeah. to wherever go. Bring smiles, you know. Them, like, they can't think they're pleasing people or bringing knobheads. positive energy like I, f I feel like my view of them is that they, they do just want to be knobheads yeah i don't know what else why else they would do it 100 percent. that is pet peeve number one uh pet peeve number two i just started this when we were talking would be um so obviously when in thrive ignite it's a membership service most people stay with us for life because it's so good occasionally we get a cancellation mm -hmm. the pet peeve isn't the cancellation i get that um but what my pet peeve is Sometimes we receive an email or a message and just because somebody's cancelling with us, they become like as formal as a royal family member. It goes, dear sir or madam, um, I would like to, you know, um, I would like to inform you and provide notice of my cancellation or some shit mm. like that. And it's like, we've just been having a conversation where we're pure bantering about some, like, yeah. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Yeah. And it's like uh, suddenly acting like, I don't know, like they don't know us or like, I don't know. Just because it's it's like a cancellation, they feel like, I, I don't know. It just, it winds me up. I wish they would just say, Mark, Emily, thanks for letting me be a part of the group. I've enjoyed it, but um, I'm leaving now. And, you know, it's been fun. See you later. <laughs> Dear sir, I was like, oh, sorry, we've not had a conversation before. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it just makes me feel weird. And then I could, because I feel like I have to reply in the same level of formality. Usually I go the opposite yeah. way and I, I kind of just like, you know, kind of write yeah. it a little bit childish. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't deal with this stuff and it's not one of my pet peeves, but, you know, I, I kind of get where you're coming from. Yeah. Um, so that is definitely one of my pet peeves. Uh, I, I've got so many. 
Should I go on? Should I tell you some more? No, I'll say one. Okay, go on. <laughs> um, obligatory. You know when people say, God, I need to think of an example now. Like, so they're going on holiday, they'll take a picture of the plane saying, no, they'll get a <laughs> pint at the airport and say, Ob- obligatory pint at the airport or yeah. whatever. Or there's so many contexts where it happens. I'm like, it's fine, obviously. Like, you know, I get it. But something about it just annoys me. Airport. I don't know if it's that word that annoys me or like, I don't know what it is. I just, I'm like, oh. I reckon I know what it is that annoys you. Um, and I reckon airport is like the main one, isn't it? Obligatory airport pint. <laughs> is that how you say the word? I, I don't even know so. how to say the word. Obligatory. Obligatory, did you say? Yeah. I don't know, one of them. But um, I reckon it's because... You probably don't like anything where people just kind of jump on the bandwagon. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like, I mean, I, we all do it, don't we? Yeah. We all do the same shit like that. So it's like... Like, it is fine, but I think it would just be cool if it was, like, natural. Like, oh, I'm having a pint at the airport. But to me, it kind of ruins it when it's, like, oh, obligated to be pint at the airport. It's like, it's it's fine. You can have a pint at the airport. You I get it. Like, I'm, it's I'm, hard to explain, and I'm not being a knobhead. Like, it is fine, but something about it just... It's a pet peeve. Nah, I'll back you up on that. I, I completely agree. Oh, our son's going cabbage. Oh, work. Right. He starts like when he wakes up, we call it cabbage face. <laughs> Give him two seconds. I think. Do you want your to, milk? We're gonna have to pause this and uh, come back to it. <laughs> right. Stay tuned for part two. And we are back. We are back. Tommy is fed. <laughs> he is milk drunk in his seat. It's so cute. I guess that's gonna happen a lot when we're trying to end this podcast, isn't it? I know. Um, anyway, where were we? Um, pet peeves. So I think the last one I said was about the obligatory. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Emily really doesn't like obligatory. Yeah. Um, and then I guess one more would be, and correct me if I'm wrong, maybe there's something I'm missing, maybe something I don't understand about this, but people saying brought instead of bought. <laughs> now, I've never heard someone say it. It's just always when they <laughs> type it, you know, so... I went to Primark and brought a new top. It's like, brought? Yeah. Bought is the word, right? 100%. I'm with you on this one. Like, um, maybe people do say it, but I'm sure they're not. So why do they type it that way? I, I don't know. It's blagged my head for the longest time. And I keep forgetting I wanted to put it on my Instagram story and ask about it. Like, what is it? Is it, is it something I'm missing? I don't know. It would look passive aggressive though, wouldn't it? Like, That's it. There's no easy way to say it. But <laughs> it is a pet peeve just because it annoys me because I don't know if I'm missing something yeah or what because one thing you know i completely agree with you but it used to do my head in when people were like grammar police you know what i mean Mm. when people would pick on your grammar or like yeah but this is different it's just a different word isn't it word and i don't get it with you em i'm with you i back you on that one but you're gonna lose a lot of friends because so many fucking people do that one i know so many people watching this right now are probably yeah are those people and i'm sorry just correct me. I, I I don't know. Come at me. It's fine. Do you, I just don't understand it. Do you hate them? <laughs> I do not hate them. See, I am just inquisitive about the situation. <laughs> <laughs> because, you know, you've gone in on Emma, and then I think you might have gone in on someone else, and John. now you're going in on obligatory, which everybody does. Everybody does that. I know. I'm going to um, offend so many people. The, there's a similar one to brought and bought, which I can't think of that right now. It might be like loss and lose or something loosed or loose no, no people say instead of lose l-o-s-e like i want to lose weight they say no, loose weight i want to lose weight like l double o s e again everybody does it so guys don't i'm just the messenger yeah, I'm, that's not my pet peeve mark said that no one. I, look i'm just a simple <laughs> podcast host do you know what i mean um right let's finish the pet peeves you've had t- I mean, if you, well, I don't know. Just do one more if you've got one. I do have one more that I want to say, and that is when people prefer the Harry Potter films to the books. I mean, that is pretty shocking. It is a sign of reduced intelligence. <laughs> <laughs> no, the books are amazing, and yeah. I remember I read the books quite late, so I watched the films, and I remember all the time to say to people, "What's going on here?" Yeah, like. You know, suddenly start going about Horcruxes and all this, and I'm like, hang on, what have I missed? Like, what? It's not explained very well. Yeah. At the end, next minute, all Dementors are flying, aren't they? Where yeah. it's like in the books, it's an epic thing that Voldemort, it's like, oh my God, he can fly. Exactly. The books do everything like so, so well, and the films just kind of reduce it all and just... And Harry's a prick in the films, and he? <laughs> he's not likeable at all. 
and it's just everything so dramatic and moody. And to be honest, like the books are so good, you didn't even need to change anything. Yeah, the, the script was there. It's there. It's written out for you. Yeah, so that's that's one of my pet peeves. Like you know, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> Tommy's Tommy, awake now. <laughs> Tommy agrees with me on this one. Um, yeah, so that is that is my other pet peeve. So moving on, and speaking of shit films or shit TV, we have recently been watching the new Lord of the Rings series, haven't we? Mm-hmm. Something we were very excited for. Well, in a way, because to be honest, when they said they were going to release a new series, I kind of thought, surely it's not going to be yeah. good. Because Lord of the Rings is that good. I thought, how can they match it? I think most things that they bring out these days are a little bit shit, to be honest with yeah. you. But, you know, and a big company like Amazon putting all this money into it, you thought maybe it'd be all right, but yeah. it's so boring. It's boring. It, the acting is bad. The, the acting CGI is, is bad. And the characters are so dislikable. Yeah, I don't know who I'm meant to be liking or following. You know, in every yeah. film or program, there is a protagonist. Is it the same if it's not a book protagonist? Yeah. And, <coughs> Excuse me, yeah. And... Um, I don't know who I'm supposed to be liking or following in it, to be honest. No. And it looks like it's for children. Like There was a scene right. in one of the ones where it was with the ship, and I just thought, what is, <laughs> what is going on? That was the episode where we switched it off. And was yeah. like, no, I can't do this anymore. I, we literally switched it off. Yeah. And to be I've honest, never done that before. No, I mean, because I'm intrigued as well, like to see just yeah. kind of what they've come up with. They've spent all this money on it. Yeah. And I was kind of like, well, you know, we might as well just see what it's about. I can't even handle it. Well, we did that for an extra episode, didn't yeah. we? And then it got to the point where I was like, oh, no, I'm not doing this again. Yeah. And then we said, all right, Waste the time. let's try The House of Dragon because that's another series that came out at the exact same time. That's the Game of Thrones spin-off. Yeah. Um, didn't expect it to be good at all. Didn't have high because... hopes after the finish of Game of Thrones. Though. Exactly. And I'm blown away. It is fantastic. It is proper good. What do you like about it? I think it is incredible. I love the subtlety of every scene there's so many things that they say without saying it the act there's little looks do you know what yeah. i mean and pauses it's not rushing it's not it's not cliche do you know what yeah. i mean it's it's so real it's every, not hollywood exactly every scene is like properly relatable the characters you know like one thing i don't like about any tv or film is just when they do like for example we meet for the first time and Every line that we exchange is something badass. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. When in reality, we'd probably be like, hi, oh, yeah, you're all right. Do you know what I mean? And yeah. I'm not expecting them to be like that in House of the Dragon. But there's just certain like subtle interactions that I think are bob on. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And I love, I think the characters are really like gripping, interesting. Very good acting. Not one dimensional, not black and white. It's not good and bad. Yeah, you know the pace I mean? is good. The yeah. scenery, it's everything. Brilliant. It is really good. Yeah, yeah. So that is our recommendation. Watch House of Dragons. <laughs> do not watch Rings of Power. <laughs> right, let's just do some quick fire questions. Yeah. So I guess we've gone on a bit. We've, um, this is episode one. The idea with this podcast is that you can take it out for a walk with, with you and just listen to us Get while you're on your walk. Get in. your steps in. Um, We're covering a bit of everything in this one, just basing it on our questions. Of, yeah. Like we'll start to go into topics as the podcasts go on, based on you know what you're interested in. There is a lot of topics on here on these questions, but we'll do them. Let's smash them out really quick and then we'll wrap it up. Okay. Dream holiday destination. Uh, Grimsby. Excellent. <laughs> Mine is Switzerland, actually. I really want to go is to Switzerland. Yeah, really, really want to go to Switzerland. You've never said? Well, I liked it anyway because it's one of those things you know, on Facebook it comes up with these beautiful places and videos. They just try and like get viral videos going. But it's always Switzerland. It looks amazing. Yeah. And then Molly May and Tommy went there recently and it just looks amazing again. Yeah. So Switzerland for me. No, I bet you're right. Best cheap meal? Fries. Excellent again. <laughs> I don't have one. I don't think I have cheat meals, really. Fries and fish. Fish. <laughs> <laughs> cheat meal. Oh, I'll have some fish. Fries and fish. Might be like curry or something, or I don't know. Spot a quiche. Spot a quiche. Um, where did Trent Jackson come from? For those who don't know, Trent Jackson is what <laughs> Mark calls himself on our classes. Come out of nowhere. This is Holly asking this question. Good question, Holly. Question we all need to know. Trent Jackson is deep inside of everybody's soul. There is a person that they are truly, you know, whether it's something that you need to express 
Do you know what I mean? Mm. It's like, I feel like I've been trapped in the closet. Really, I am Trent Jackson. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> and since we've been doing these thriving night classes, you know, I'm like a peacock. I want to spread my tail feathers and show them off to the world. Wow, do you know what okay. I mean? Um, so so yeah. am I like in a 14-year relationship with Mark or with Trent Jackson? Well, you've been with Mark and that's been all right. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, okay, steady. Right. Steady. But do I get a choice whether I want to be with Trent Jackson? With Trent Jackson, there are no choices. You're either on the roller coaster or you're on the roller coaster. Do you know what I mean? I think I'll jump off the roller coaster. <laughs> um, Natasha says, what's it like being parents? It's good. What you say? Yeah, I mean, I didn't know what to expect in the first Hard. place, really. Um, I just thought it'd be kind of fun. <laughs> I, didn't, I, think, I thought it would be hard, but I didn't know in what sense it would be hard. Yeah. Does that make sense? Because yeah. everyone just says it's hard. So in my head, it was like, oh, it's going to be really hard being a parent. Yeah, Emily just tends to ignore him anyway, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> no, well, I think it's great. Yeah. The one funny thing, well, there's so many funny things every day, isn't there? Yeah, he makes us laugh. He is a dream baby. So he really is a dream baby. He's I find just it, funny. I, I, yeah, he's a dream, but I find it hilarious that like when he wakes up, he goes from zero being asleep to infuriated about the fact there's no milk within like two seconds. Yeah, he gets now. He doesn't even give us a chance to get the ball. It's just we're asleep. We look at him like, oh, I'll turn away for a second. Next minute, he's like, ah. No, he just this like shout. It's not like a cry. He's like, ah. Yeah. And I'm like, all right, I'll get you milk. It's like, so you know. cute. But uh, to be fair, he gets that from you because <laughs> <laughs> Emily gets so fucking upset when she wakes up from a nap, don't you? Yeah, I don't <laughs> like napping for this reason. I don't know what it is. I wake up and I feel like I don't know where I am. What day is it? I feel like hungry. I feel yeah. thirsty. I need a wee. I just wake up and I feel <laughs> distressed. I'm just like, what is going on? It's different to waking up in the morning L literally. when you have a nap. When sometimes Emily's been having a nap and I've been in the other room or wherever, and I get a text and it's just crying faces emojis. Yeah. Literally. <laughs> I'm not actually crying, that'd be weird. I just wake up from a nap and I'm in tears. No, you, I wouldn't be surprised. You get upset about everything. I get upset about nothing. I, I genuinely don't get upset about things, do I? We've I'm just not had a crying. Two hour monologue about your identity crisis. I'm a crying. True. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, well, what about. Every day on your Instagram, you're talking about how distressed you are about spiders. I mean, come on. Surely <laughs> everyone is doing the same thing. Like, September is like the worst month because apparently it's spider month. Spider and month? <laughs> Nobody calls it that, do they? No, it should. What? It's going to be spider month for now. It's not September, it's oh, spider month. We should have launched our September challenge as spider month yeah, challenge. I'd have got some sign ups. But they're just. Disgust. They make me sick to my stomach. Yeah. They are just vile. And I'm pretty sure everyone would cry over a spider. Especially if, right, you get some fresh bedding. Everybody loves fresh bedding. It's mm. the best feeling in the world. So I get it out of the cupboard, this fresh bedding, you know, shake it to like loosen it all out before I put the duvet in it. And I was like, oh, this is my black layer. I thought it should be a bit of fluff. So I open it up and it's a, it's a massive big, it was dead. An arrow dog. I just thought, right, how long has that been in there? When did it die? Could I have put this on and there's a bit of life spot? Oh, so don't change your bedding or check your bedding. Probably safest to just leave your bedding as it is forever. Yeah, never change your bedding from now on. <laughs> and before you get in bed, check your pillows, check the duvet. Until spider season ends, which I googled, it's the first week in October, I think. Until spider month ends, guys. Um, but I think, yeah, you know, let's wrap that up because that's a good message to go out on. Do you know what I mean? We're keeping people safe. We're keeping people safe, aren't okay, we? What is the message? Don't leave your bed. Don't change your bed. Yeah. Yeah. Just let it rot. Let Even it if rot. you know it stinks and whatever, you've been sweating in it. You, you've had a few hangovers and you've just rotted. Just do not change your pizza on the rust us on this one. Anyway, you're all right, so mate. So thank you. Anyway, but if you listened to all of this, I'm not sure what the topic was. We covered a bit of everything, which I guess was the plan. But I'll put another question box out on my Instagram. Get more questions. There's still a lot there actually that I've not answered. But you know, there's going to be lots of podcasts, lots to cover, lots of topics. Yeah. Um, Stay tuned for episode two, guys. Let us know what you want us to talk about. We can talk about our relationship. We've been together 14 years, and I think we're 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 in a pretty good relationship. Pretty rocky. <laughs> pretty good relationship parenting 
owning a business, yeah, being self-employed, being self-employed all that kind of, whatever you want to know, just let us know. And guys, please, if you have listened to this, do us a favor. It's the first one. We want to grow it. We want to reach more people and we want to get better at this. Please do all the usual shit. And we would appreciate it if you can subscribe and you can like it and you can share it. Any, every little help. So thank you for that. Yes, thank you for listening. This is just fun to us. Like, this isn't our business. It's just, we wanted a side project. There's a lot to talk about. Instagram story slides are like 15 seconds. Wrap it up because Tommy's kicking (laughs) off. We'll see you soon, everybody. Bye.